Welcome to episode 10 on how to build your very own electric bike. If you haven't seen it already, there is a bike giveaway going on right now. So please make sure to enter. You can find the link in the description. If you're watching this video the day it came out, you still have a few days to enter. That competition will end on November 30th of 2018. I may have more giveaways in the future, so if you're watching after that, also click the link in the description to my website and see if there's another one going on. So let's go ahead and roll the intro. Bolton e-bikes. If you want an electric bike that's better, then ride along with me and my channel. all of our cables that are needed on the bike. Uh, last thing is something called a brake switch. This is not actually required but I certainly recommend it. Basically what this switch will do once we've installed it is when you pull the brake lever it will tell the controller that the brake is being pulled and it will cut the power to the motor. That way if you're going down a steep hill or you're just trying to slow down you can't accidentally pedal and hit the pedal assist on or bump the throttle and get a little jolt of power when you're not expecting it. So once again not required for this particular controller and motor combination to actually work so you could leave this off but I recommend installing them and we will show you how. Now this is just for the hydraulic brakes that we're using because these weren't originally made for electric bicycles they don't have this electrical switch installed so this is something that can work for any hydraulic brake if you want to upgrade like we've done here. If you're putting on some mechanical disc brakes then there are levers like this that already have a switch built in. So for the mechanical brakes this step isn't required. You'll still have the cable running, it'll plug into the same spot but you don't have to install a switch on the lever because it's already there. Uh, there are some but not very many hydraulic brakes available that have switches already installed. So I have some that I have modified uh, from Shimano. Uh, Shimano doesn't make them that way. We buy them, then modify them and resell them that way. And then the Juantec brakes here, uh, we go ahead and just add the switch right onto the brake afterwards. So this is the sensor for the switch. It's a magnetic switch, so there's two parts. There is a magnet and that will go on later. But first we're going to peel off this sticky tape here and we're going to stick this sensor right there. We're going to reinforce that with some extra glue later. I'll show you where to put the magnet specifically. There's the magnet we're going to use. So that'll snap on right there for now. Uh, we'll come back to that but with that being right there that'll allow us to test the bike once we have everything plugged in. Uh, eventually what we'll do is glue this magnet on but to adjust that and make sure it's working right we need to have everything plugged in on the bike and have the screen turned on first. Now we want to do the same thing for the other side. Now that we have really all of the cables on the bike from the bars down to where the controller is going to go and we'll get the controller on in a moment uh, something to think about is how you're going to run the cables and what you're going to use to tie them together. Uh, there's a few different things you can get. You can get some different wire wraps. This one splits in half so you don't have to twist it around. That makes it really easy to put on. Um, this is a smaller one. This comes in different sizes so be aware of that if you're looking at a picture online. There are different sizes available and if you get just the right size then you can in theory twist these on. I haven't always had the best of luck with that. Um, I used to use this, these a lot uh, just because it looks nice and clean, keeps everything really nice and tight. The downside to that is if you ever want to change anything or have access to your wires then it takes a little bit more time to unwrap things and get to where you want to be. So usually I stick to zip ties and just try and do them spaced evenly uh, it looks nice and clean if done right and it makes it really easy to cut the zip ties off and then 
pull some wires out if you want to change a throttle or do something in the future and then just put a few new zip ties back on later. Now the fun part of actually wrapping these up, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Make sure that you can turn the bars all the way to the right and all the way to the left, however you run the cables. Make sure nothing is going to get down into the tire. Don't run anything through this section of the fork. That's not a good place to be. Um, now you always already have your brake lines installed. Uh, they're nice and stiff, so that's a good thing to follow and what I like to do. So that kind of gives you a starting point. It's like, okay, I have a brake line coming here. I can put a twist tie here and then start following this along. Remember that you've got this brake switch over here. So this one, maybe you follow along the switch that's mounted on the handlebars and then it joins together with the others at this point. So however it looks good to you and the cables don't bind. So now we'll actually get started. So we'll put one here. We'll leave these just a little bit loose starting off. That way we can slide the cables around and adjust if needed. And we'll run the brake switch from this side over. Like to make sure they're not twisted around each other. So I think I'll take the cable from the screen and put it together with this here. And we'll run it down to right here. Now at this point we have a larger bundle to work with and that makes things go a little bit faster. And I'm gonna put the cable on for the brake first and then attach my other cables to it. And we can go all the way back. Not tightening these down all the way until I know everything looks like it's in the right spot. Now we will grab the controller and we'll set the controller down here. We'll start plugging in all these wires. And once all the wires are plugged in, that'll give us a better picture of how the wire should run. Sometimes I'll run, depending on the bike, the wires along top with the brake. And as long as the cables are long enough, that's probably what we'll do here. You can always add some extensions if needed. Uh, you may also choose to run your wires along the tube here. Uh, I also have some other different frames from this one that have a hole here and another hole down here so you can run cables inside the frame. Okay, the motor controller is back and I'm going to explain all the connections on this so you know what's what and where things should be coming from. The motor cable is the largest one. This is pretty standard for 750 watt or even 1000 watt or more hub motors. So there's the connector there. There are three pins that you can see easily in here. I don't know if the camera will want to focus on those or not. There we go. Uh, those are not the only three pins in the connector. There are others down in deeper that are harder to see. So this has to be plugged in all the way for all those connectors to be seated. So this is one of the connectors that has an arrow on it. Right up here. And almost can see that. Uh, there's an arrow on the motor plug as well, on the motor itself, so you know that these are lined up and can plug in together. Now moving on, we have two red connectors that look basically the same. Those are for your brakes. It doesn't matter which one is which. Uh, we have one other red connector here. Uh, that's an accessory output. So I've got, for example, a headlight, taillight kit, and a horn that can be plugged in there. They just pull their power from that port. Uh, basically, it's just battery voltage. So if you're on 36 volts, you're going to have 36 volts there. If you're running a 48-volt battery, you'll have 48 volts available right there. Uh, this green plug is for the LCD, for the screen. We have a black 
that is for the throttle and the yellow 3 pin is for our pedal assist and this yellow XT60 connector is going to our battery so before we get any further and get anything wrapped up and tied up I like to plug in bare minimum number of things that make the bike work and make sure the bike works that way if you have a bad screen or a bad uh, controller or just a bad connection uh, you can find that so here's what's required uh, the motor plug obviously not required for the screen to turn on however um, our battery plug the pedal assist this yellow connector is not required for the bike to turn on and for the motor to run it's only required for the pedal assist function to actually work obviously accessory cables not needed uh, the screen is so if you don't have a screen plugged into this the bike cannot turn on unless you put a cap on this there's a special cap that grounds two of the pins and allows it to turn on uh, throttle is also required the way these throttles are wired up uh, two of the pins act like a switch uh, that's for the key on the throttle we're using and the brakes are not required so we're gonna hook up what's needed right now so let's grab our green for the screen and these also have a little arrow on them to line them up uh, instead of looking at the arrow I look inside you can see there's a little notch what I like to do is line that little notch up and then once I know it's lined up then just kinda twist and push in and that works for all the connectors if you do that you won't bend any pins and run into any problems so let's find our throttle connection here it is line that up once again plug it in and then we have our motor cable so we're gonna have to set this down and run that all the way back and then of course our battery connection here as well so we can go ahead and put the battery connector on okay we have the required connections on there's a switch on the battery we're gonna turn that on and then we have the switch here with the key once again when it's on the key won't come out that's how you can tell the difference and then to turn the screen on we press the power button here and hold it for a few seconds and our screen just came on so that's a good sign the up arrow is a backlight in case it's a little bit dark so that's good that turns on and what we can do is just lift up the rear wheel we've got a lot of wires dangling here so be careful that nothing's close to that rear tire but I'm just gonna lift it and just very gently give it just a tiny bit of throttle and make sure that motor turns over perfect that's what we should have at this point I know the basic functions are working so I feel comfortable at this point to unplug these connections run these wires whichever way they're gonna fit the best and then once they're connected <coughs> we'll get everything plugged in uh, we'll make sure our pedal assist works uh, we'll make sure that the brakes are working like they're supposed to the brake switches rather and then we'll tidy everything up as far as the electrical parts go we know the motor controller is going to go this direction uh, because there's an open slot at the bottom of this box for the wires to come out so we'll set that there just to give us an idea of the cables and if they're going to reach so we can see we've got the LCD extension might be required if we're going to run this one down there so that that is an option just to plug in an extension and it looks like the other three wires should be just right we don't want a whole lot of extra slack because we don't have want a bunch of wires dangling everywhere that we need to bunch up and bundle up so that actually looks pretty good if we do uh, one extension for the screen because that's not quite going to reach I think everything else is going to be just right okay we got the controller on the box closed up 
there's four bolts that go in the back. Uh, I did have to slide the battery off to reach this bottom bolt in this corner. Uh, it was a tight fit, but I was able to get not only the controller in there, but all of the excess cable. So that means we're going to have a really nice clean installation because this cable is going down to the bottom of this box. It's kind of tucked behind the box along the frame there. Uh, we'll tighten up all of these zip ties and what we're going to do before we tighten them up again though is plug the motor cable back in. Need to run that one to the back and then we'll test all of the functions. Uh, we'll test our brake switches and we'll get to those in a moment as far as how to install those properly and once that's buttoned up we've got uh, just a few more things to get this bike wrapped up. Now we're going to come back to this brake switch now that our cables are all nice and tidied up. So we put this on here earlier with some double sided tape that it comes with. Uh, you can see it wiggles a little bit already. I don't trust that long term to hold so I like to reinforce it. Uh, I use some super glue for this part. Uh, if you can, if you get one of these that actually comes with a little brush, that's really handy because then you can take and actually just brush the corners of that switch right where you need it. Uh, you can use just standard super glue that you know you kind of squeeze the bottle and it comes out, but then you can get messy quickly. So with this one, we can just put it right where we need it. Now I did say this was a magnetic switch and here's the magnet. We set that there just so we didn't lose it. So the way these switches work when the magnet is close to the switch so next to it right here then it's going to assume the brake is not on. So this lever is not pulled. When the magnet moves away from the switch it assumes that the lever is being pulled and the brakes are being applied and it's going to cut the power to the motor. So to know right where to put this magnet there's actually a symbol on the LCD. So I'm going to turn the camera around so you can see the screen and see exactly what I'm talking about. So there is a symbol right here you can't see it at the moment. Uh, right now it's off that means that the brakes are not applied. So if we take the magnet and move it away from the brake. Uh, now we can see the symbol right here. Now it thinks the brake is applied. So that's the symbol we're looking for. Brakes are not being applied, brakes on. Not being applied, brakes on. I've loosened up the screen and I've tilted it this way. I know it's upside down, but all we really need to see is that brake switch symbol, whether it's on or off. Now with the magnets sitting right on top of the levers where I placed them earlier, uh, it's close enough that it thinks the brakes are not applied so everything will work. Um, but what we're going to do is take this magnet, we're going to put just a dab of super glue on it and we're going to position it on the lever itself, so on the black portion of the lever here and just get it positioned to where the brake symbol is off. So right now it's on, the magnet's away from the switch, it thinks I'm pulling the brakes. Now this doesn't need to be a lot of super glue, just actually a little spot. Um, super glue does not work that well on a magnet like this, especially to metal, uh, so that's not going to be the glue we'll actually use. Uh, but that's a good thing in a way because when we're first testing and trying to position it, if we don't have it in the right spot, it will pop off. So here we go. If we put the magnet right here, we can see the brake symbol is off. We're just going to hold that for a second until the glue dries. There we go. Okay, so that's in place. Now if we pull the lever, you can see the brake switch comes on. You want to make sure it takes a little bit of action and it doesn't come on, say, when you wiggle it like this, because otherwise the brakes will be coming on all the time if you're hitting a bump or just if you're naturally resting your fingers on the brakes you might have a tendency to pull them a tiny bit so make sure that you have to actually pull a little ways and actually apply some braking pressure before that switch comes on 
So I've got a two-part epoxy right here. I've mixed up a little batch. I'm going to move quickly because it's probably drying already. Uh, these are good for metal to metal, uh, metal to the ceramic or magnetic things, just all sorts of stuff. Uh, the two-part epoxy I find holds really well. That'll make sure those magnets do not come off. So here I've got some of the epoxy mixed up and on this little miniature Q-tip here. And we're just going to dab a little bit around that magnet and once that's done, we'll let that dry. So I got the right side done, now we'll do a little bit onto the left side. This is tough stuff. We'll glue just about anything together, so do be careful not to get it onto the lever in between the brake reservoir and the lever there. Make sure you don't glue your brakes at all. Looks a lot like a bike. It's beginning to feel a lot like a bike. Um, basically everything works on it right now. We do have some programming to do on the screen. We still have to put on our chain, adjust the derailleur, and install our pedals. So just a few simple steps left and this bike's going to be ready for its first test ride. So if you've gotten this far, thanks again for taking the course. Stick with it. We're almost there.